All right, we're gonna take this piece of line and show the West Country whip. We like to start off the end of the line by taking a small piece of gaff tape and taping around it so that the uh, line doesn't unravel, the core doesn't come out while we're doing it. We measure out about three feet of wax thread and then we just tie half knots around the thread and go down and go from opposite sides on each on each half knot. So put one on top and then one on the bottom. The benefit of the West Country Whip is that if one of these pieces gets cut, you'll still have about 20 or 30 other half knots along the line, and you'll probably have a chance to notice it unraveling before it comes completely undone, whereas the common whip, if the line gets cut, the whole The whole knot's going to come undone, or the whole whip will be. This would also make a good decorative knot to put on the end of a, a tiller with the larger piece of line. And since I'm at the end of the line, I can get the loop started if I want. If you had a longer line, you could just come underneath it. Tie and pull underneath and get it. Get it going. What we've read about how much to whip, how far to go, is take about one and a half times the diameter to the line and uh, take the whipping out about that far. So with the 3 8 inch line, you try to do about 3 quarter inches of whipping. Now that you've got the idea, we'll go ahead and finish this one up. So to finish up the West Country Whip, we'll t just tie a square knot once you've gone out as far as you want to go. If you have stranded line, you can take the little tails and tuck them into one of the strands. If you don't, you can cut them. can trim off the excess of the line. And if you'd like, you can sear the ends, but you can just leak that as is, and that's the West Country Whip.